People say less is more. At Red Barn, we think less is better. It's what you won't find that sets our natural premium pet food apart. No byproducts, no corn or soy, no fillers. Just the natural ingredients your pets need to live the healthy life they deserve. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Barn Naturals Pet Food. Simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Visit redbarninc.com slash coupon to save a dollar off your first can. You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. International success coach and noted author, Constance Arnold, delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices, as well as with best-selling authors and experts that she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and words to work for you and to bring about a life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And, of course, I am Constance Arnold, uh, your most gracious host. And today I am broadcasting live with just a little touch of Southern flavor from a beautiful, magnificent, at least I think so, Atlanta, Georgia. So grateful that you've joined me from all over the world. And I can truly say that I believe that your life will never be the same again after listening to this recording. Well, how are you doing today? I hope that you're having a just phenomenal day. And of course, you know that is a choice, right? Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about, you know, everything begins with thinking and choosing what you want for the day. And uh, just knowing that you're going to be blessed by listening uh, to this recording. I'm going to be teaching today and I'm going to be teaching on uh, rituals for creating a successful life or what do successful people do in the area of habits to create uh, an extraordinary life or how you can develop small habits that will begin to create the life of your dreams. You name it, I'm going to be covering uh, those three topics. And of course, all of you know that you can go to my website and visit my website at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. And there you can take a look at my success products. Uh, You can uh, read articles that I've written. Uh, I've written articles for the Huffington Post. Sometimes I forget to mention that. That. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook, and soon I'm going to be getting an Instagram page, and uh, so you guys can know what I'm doing and know what I'm up to. So we're going to go ahead and get started. You know, I guess it comes from my being a professor and a teacher. I just like to lay the foundation. And so I want to give you some how-tos. I'm going to give you some information first. And then the second part of the program, I'm going to be giving you some how-tos. So today I'm talking about what are some of the rituals that successful people have or rituals for a for creating a successful life or what are some habits that you can begin to implement to create an extraordinary life you know we were created by God to live an extraordinary life I mean, we all know it, we all feel it, we all are striving for it. So every day, every morning when you wake up with God brings the dawn of a new day with new possibilities. So today could turn out to be the best day of your life, but how it ends largely depends on how it begins. How do you begin your day? So you are in con- you are in charge of taking control of your day from its very beginning. You know, many I guess a couple of years ago, I did a session on commanding your morning, controlling your day. If you haven't heard that, you got to go back and listen to it. And basically, what I was saying was that when you wake up in the morning on that particular. Um, 
recording, I was talking about you command your day. You take control of your day by your declarations and your affirmations. You determine, you say to the world, hey, this is what it's going to look like today. And so if you have not heard that, go back and listen to it. Because every day that you wake up, there are uh, all of the probabilities in the world exist. Because you've heard me say that everything is already complete and finished. And so it is your thinking and choosing and attention that will determine how your day ends. So 40% of actions that people perform each day aren't actually decisions, but habits. So uh, I looked up habits and rituals since we're talking, I'm going to be talking about it. And a ritual is a religious or solemn ceremony consisting of a series of actions, notice that word, performed according to a prescribed order. On the other hand, a habit is a usual way of behaving, uh, something a person does often in a regular and repeated way, a recurrent, often unconscious pattern of behavior that is acquired through frequent repetition. I love that. You know why? Because I can look at your rituals. I can look at your daily habits and patterns and I can tell you where your life is going. You don't have to say one word to me. So we're talking about the rituals of successful people. So it's just so important how we begin our mornings. And so I'm going to talk about uh, the morning rituals first of all. So uh, successful people they have certain rituals in the morning. Of course, they have rituals all day long and on a weekly basis, but I'm going to first start off talking about what some of their rituals are in the morning. Uh, What does uh, Bill Gates and Oprah and President Barack Obama do in the mornings? What, What do they all have in common? Guess what it is? They all have rituals. And and they're small rituals, but they have developed into large uh, behavior patterns. So every morning they have rituals where they are proactively and consciously taking care of themselves first. Because they realize that if they take care of themselves, then what? They are better able to serve others. These rituals really help put them in a certain state so that they can create the day that they wanted. I'm going to talk about this a little later, that rituals create states. If your ritual is to get up, have five cups of coffee, I don't have anything against coffee because I like coffee, and three donuts, and and then by 10 o'clock, some more sweets, then that's a ritual, and it puts your body in a certain state. Uh, they are proactive, not reactive. Most people are reactive because they've, they've gotten up. Uh, and they just possibly been rushed during the morning. So um, we're going to be looking at what do they do? Because remember, success always leaves clues. So how do you wake up in the morning? Do you wake up, um, do you hit the snooze button like five times? Do you check your email? Go on Facebook? Uh, do you have an unhealthy breakfast? Are you screaming at the kids? Remember, you are body, soul, and spirit. And really, you need to nourish your body, your soul, and your spirit. All three of those early in the morning. Why? Because this enables you to deal with all of the challenges and demands that you have for your day. Every day when I first wake up, the first thing I think is, God, I have all of the grace that I need for the demands for this day. So at the beginning of the show, as I said earlier, I'm going to be talking about 
morning? What what are some things that successful people do in the morning? We're going to take a look at what the most successful people do who are most fit, most focused, the wealthiest, have the best relationships, and live a very purposeful life. They have specific practices and rituals that really help them to prepare to be their best throughout the day. So you can model your own life or your own behavior or your own rituals uh, after some of the most successful people in the world. And uh, I'm just going to give you some examples. They're not God's favorite. They are just people who have tapped into the success laws. Remember, I said that success leaves clues. And, you know, I think that success begins with small baby steps uh, that really turn into gigantic big steps. So here are a few people. Tony Robbins, we all know him. He's the guy that stands on the stages and screams. He's the, he, one of the greatest motivators of all times. But he has an hour of power. And then he jumps into a hot and cold pool. He says that helps to strengthen his body. And then he floods himself with visualization of what he wants his day to be like. And he has a daily spiritual practice. What about one of the busiest men in the world, President Barack Obama? We know he's very busy. He gets up at 6.45 a.m. He works out for uh, 45 minutes. He has a healthy breakfast uh, many times with his family. Uh, he doesn't look at any news or any criticism about what he is doing or not doing before he starts his day. He avoids coffee and instead he drinks water, a green tea or or juice, and I love how he's guarding his mind, and that's why I'm just an avid believer of you don't need to turn on the television early in the morning if you you have not had your quiet time. Okay, so that's President Obama. Okay, Steve Jobs, uh, before he made his transition, he revealed something that he did every morning to the graduating class at Stanford. And he said for the past 33 years, uh, when he wakes up, he asked himself, would I be doing what I'm doing today if it was the last day of my life? And he said, if the answer has been no for two days, then he knows that there needs to be a change. What about you? How, how are you starting your day? Okay, let's take another of person. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, we know who he is, create founder of Facebook. He wears the same thing every day, he said, because it's one less decision he has to make, and that helps to keep him focused on business. Mark, I don't think many women would be up for that. <laughs> Bill Gates is up early. He's on the treadmill for one hour, and he's watching informational and business teaching. Howard Schultz, who's the CEO of Starbucks, he 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 walks and then he walks his three dogs. Benjamin Franklin used to say, what good should I do today? OK, Richard Branson, we know him. I don't know if he's a billionaire. I think he probably is. He's up early. He leaves the curtains undrawn so that when the morning sun comes up, uh, it comes straight into his eyes. He loves bouncing out of bed. And then he swims around his island. Sorry, folks, we don't have an island. <laughs> he has his own private island. He swims around his island. He does kite surfing. And then he sits down to a healthy breakfast. Can you see how all of these successful people have rituals in their lives that really prepare them for the day? Okay, Jack Dorsey, he, who is the founder of Twitter, he's up at 5.30 a.m. Have you noticed that everybody gets up early? You know, it's just something, I don't know what it is, but it's something about early morning. I don't know if the vibration is calmer or... 
I don't know what it is or if it's the silence, but it's something very powerful. It, even in the Bible, it talks about how Jesus um, rose early and prayed early. That's interesting. But Jack Doyce, who's the founder of Twitter, he's up at 530, run six miles in meditation. Ellen DeGeneres, she works out and then she has 20 minutes of meditation and she says that it helps her focus in on her day. Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones, he exercises six days per week. I didn't know that he did that to ensure that he has the stamina that he needs on stage for his fans because my goodness how long has Mick uh, Jagger been singing with the Rolling Stones probably 30 years Lady Gaga she does yoga and five minutes of directed love and gratitude and compassionate thinking Oprah all I need is one word, her name. <laughs> Oprah does 20 minutes of meditation and she walks away feeling full and full of joy. Uh, she said that it helps her, that meditation helps her to deal uh, with the decisions for her day. It creates her best work and best life. Okay, Deepak Chopra wakes up at four. Oh my goodness, and meditates for two hours. Two hours. My goodness, we know that he's been doing that and is very disciplined for a long time. So, so what am I saying? Your rituals shape and change your life. And I wanted to give these examples because these people are just ordinary people who decided to begin with small baby rituals and habits and over time they have created uh, extraordinary lives because those small baby rituals take on a life force of its own and creates a momentum. And, and so everyone is controlled by rituals. I don't know what your ritual is, but I sure do want you to really uh, think about it and, and write it down during the course of this show because rituals put you in the, the a state and rituals control all areas of your life. So how do you influence yourself on a daily basis to take action? It's your rituals. How do you master the state of your life on a daily basis? It's your rituals. So when you develop ongoing rituals, it creates an extraordinary life. For example, all the people who I shared with you who meditated, that meditation puts you in a state. All the people who exercise, did you notice how many people did some form of physical activity? And you know, they're saying now that you really should exercise early in the morning. And I've always been an afternoon or or evening walk or runner. So I've been thinking about that. Of course, when I do my weight training, I usually do that in the morning. But have you noticed that uh, when you exercise, it puts you in a state of what? Of feeling great, feeling vibrant. When you do a green drink, how do you, it puts you in a state of just taking in live raw food, etc. And so... I tell you, whatever you want to call it, whatever you do every day creates rituals. And so we all get up, we wake up, we brush our teeth. That's a ritual. We get a cup of coffee or tea. Uh, we we check our emails. We, we may hit snooze three times. Uh, but all of those things are creating rituals. And what I want to say to you today, why not begin to incorporate some new rituals in your life for 2016 that are going to really bring you more success? 
Uh, and so let's just take somebody who uh, wakes up every day. I'm not judging anybody who wakes up every day and they eat lots of bread and have a big old muffin and four cups of coffee. And by 10 a.m., you know, they might be feeling kind of sluggish. And then they may say, I'm going to go and get me a Snickers bar. That ritual, that continual, that continued ritual puts them in a state of what feeling sluggish, unhealthy, and and really it impacts you know your adrenal glands just like crazy. So if you continue to eat in a certain way, which is a ritual, I can predict your life. Conversely, on the other hand, if somebody has created a ritual of I'm going to work out five to six days a week, that person can walk in the room and we can tell that they have a, we can look at them and tell that they have a ritual. So remember, I'm going to say it again, different rituals create different states. And it all depends on what you want in your life. Okay, let's talk a little bit about relationships. Your relationships are a result of your ritual. Let's just say if you've been married for a while and, and you know, you got three children and you come home and you turn on the TV, then you take a nap, then you get on the computer, then you go to bed. It's easy for me to tell you where your relationship is going to go. Conversely, if you come in the door and you like, hey, baby, you give her a big kiss and you, you guys communicate and talk about your day and you go in the kitchen and you help your spouse, etc. What that is a ritual that you created. And I can tell you where that relationship is going. And so, as I said earlier, you know, did you notice that most of the people were really were up and at them really early? So, so if you ask any CEO, any politician, any professional athlete, anybody out there, they all start their day at the crack of dawn so that they can uh, gain a leg up on the competition. So some of you might need to start a ritual of going to bed early. You know, it's so funny because all of my friends, they just laugh at me or they used to at least because I go to bed. I'm asleep at 10 o'clock, but I get up early. I'm awake at six. And and um, I guess I've just learned from so many successful people. It's just something very powerful about going to bed early and getting up early. And even uh, our bodies supposedly get deeper sleep during certain times of the night. So, and that people who even work you know, different shifts do not get the deep sleep that people get who go to bed early. And so, but they laugh about it, but they used to because sleep is just so important. You remember uh, last week when Shante Taylor was talking about the importance of sleep in our brain. So these people, these successful people, we know that they get up early. So uh, they create a routine and they stick with it. And over over the years, studies have proven that willpower is strongest in the morning. Isn't that interesting? Before exhaustion and other priorities get in the way. So uh, one thing I want you to think about before I give you some pointers, I want you to adopt a morning ritual that where you where you would really start to see big results and, and so uh, I know you're asking so Constance what is your ritual so I want to share with you my ritual my ritual is is that the night before I go to bed with um, meditation or spiritual teaching on so all during the night something is getting in my subconscious when I wake up in the morning, I just don't jump out of bed. I, I, I open my eyes and the first thing that I say is God loves me. God is concerned about me and God cares for me. That's the first thing that I think. And, you know, my thoughts could be all over the place because I know that when I wake up that I have received so many emails from people, my listeners who live in Asia because they're on a different time zone, uh, in Africa, in Europe, 
but I made a decision that <clears throat> I was really going to give God the first priority of my day. So then after I think that, I may get up and get a cup of green tea, a cup of coffee, and then I'll read. And, and uh, I may read my Bible, but I may read a book. I may read something off of Kindle, and then I take notes about what I'm reading. And later that night, FYI, I will record those notes that I took earlier during the day and listen to them. And then I, I say my declarations and my affirmations. Sometimes I have 40 or 50. They may take five minutes. I speak it out loud. And then I spend time in prayer and I meditate. And then I'm quiet just to see if I can hear what is spirit saying to me about this day. What should I do for this day? And then after that, I tackle my most difficult task. So that's how I begin my morning. And so I really believe that that really sets me up for a very successful day. So I've been sharing what, what some successful people do uh, in the mornings to really jumpstart their morning. So when I come back, I'm going to share with you maybe 20 different rituals that you can begin to incorporate in your life. Some of them uh, come from Forbes 10 Morning Habits of Successful People. And some of it just comes from my 25 years of just working with successful people and taking a look at what they are doing. Remember this, God is no respecter of person. Universal laws will work for anyone, and that includes you, who will work it. And what I love about rituals is you can start small. The only thing is that you have to start small, but you have to consistently do the rituals and implement the habits every single day. So if that's one minute, two minutes, four minutes, five minutes, as long as you do it every day, as I quoted the verse in Luke, God says that he who is faithful over a small thing will be ruler over something big. So uh, while we go to these uh, quick commercials, I want you to think about how the power of momentum can come into your life by beginning to, number one, identify what works for you. Number two, make a quality decision. Number three, make a commitment that I am going to implement these rituals, these habits into my life so that I can create an extraordinary life. So I want you to stay tuned. And uh, after these quick commercials, I'm going to be right back. For the past 30 years, Constance Arnold has coached clients globally in the areas of relationships, wealth, and career. Her vast clinical background gives her extraordinary understanding of human behavior to accelerate manifestation. Every coaching client receives proven action plans to create change from the inside out. Constance will be right by your side. Talk to her today at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. The incredible, magnificent Law of Attraction Cruise of a Lifetime is taking place on March 6th through 10th, 2016, featuring New York Times best-selling Law of Attraction author Pam Grout and featuring Michael Perlman, MD of Law of Attraction Journaling and best-selling and award-winning wealth author Richard Harper along with our own beautiful and dynamic speaker, Constance Arnold, will be on board as well. Don't forget Gary Temple Bodley, who channels Joshua, will be on board, and you will be able to have direct interactions with Joshua. And then there's the Champagne Living Dream Coach, Cassie Parks, 
as well as me, Jules Johnson. This is a powerful cruise and it's happening during the week of the total solar eclipse in Pisces, which is ruler of the water, which means that which you shine a light on will shift almost effortlessly. So what are you waiting for? This is your chance to finally change your life in profound ways. Go to LOA radionetwork.com and sign up today there's still cabins available but the rates will increase weekly need a cabin mate no worries we have like-minded individuals for you to room with take this time and invest in yourself you will be so happy you did go to loa radio network.com see you on board Do you have an upcoming event where you need a dynamic speaker? Constance Arnold is a sought-after keynote speaker that will enlighten the entire audience with proven strategies that are aligned with your organization's vision and mission. An experienced speaker for major Fortune 500 companies, Constance has entertained audiences with inspiring change. Constance would love to make your next event an extraordinary success. Contact her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. Well, I am back, and guess what? I forgot to say happy Valentine's Day. This is Valentine's weekend, and I want to send out love to everyone all over the world. And you might say, Constance, I don't have a lover in my life. I don't have a relationship. Yes, you do. You have a relationship with God who loves you deeply. You have a relationship with yourself, with family and friends. So I would say, take a look at what you do have, the love that you do have in your life, and be grateful for that. So we are talking about how you can begin to develop rituals in your life so that you can create and live an extraordinary life. And I have 20 different rituals that you can consider implementing in your life. And I pray that I can get through them. Okay, so here we go. So why is it important to incorporate rituals in your life or habits? Um, it's It's important because you want to be able to live a purposeful and extraordinary life. You don't want your lack of focus or your lack of discipline to really keep you from living a powerful life. You know, I believe that God knows that many of us cannot take those quantum leaps toward our goals and dreams, you know, but we can begin to develop small rituals in our daily lives and those small rituals lead to what? Big dreams. And, you know, it's so interesting because a lot of people just want to skip over the process, but there's no shortcut to success. And if you find out, let me know. And and that's why when it comes to success, uh, people really need to have a strong foundation for it. And many times when people receive success immediately, a lot of money, a lot of fame, they don't have the discipline or they don't have the habits that are built in that will sustain and maintain their success. And so we all just love having gigantic dreams, uh, enormous goals for our life. It's so exhilarating. It's exciting. Uh, and sometimes it's utterly terrifying. But if we have uh, created daily habits or rituals, uh, it automatically helps us to utilize those aspects of our rituals on a daily basis. I believe that rituals add a sense of reliability to our lives so that when we take in those big risks or those big gigantic steps, that those habits or rituals, we can depend on them or we can lean into them. So here are I'm going to try to get 20 rituals. Think about which one really resonates with you. Okay, the first one is get up an hour earlier. What would happen to your life if you did that, created that ritual? Did you know that there are 25 hours in the day? 
aha, I'm telling you something different. Well, you've just been sleeping through that 25th hour. So getting up an hour early is going to take some adjusting to. I mean, if you're used to getting up at seven and you got to get up at six and it may take you a little time, but once you make it a habit, you will never go back. As I said before, it's something mysterious. It's something powerful about early morning. Even Jesus in the Bible, it says that he arose early and prayed. And research has shown not only are early risers more optimistic and more conscientious, they also anticipate problems and minimize them more efficiently, you know, which of course is what crucial to success in business. So think about getting up and an hour early. I'm an early bird myself. I go to bed early. I get up early. The second ritual, think about it, visualize. You know, when you get up in the morning, you know, early hours really foster reflection. Uh, I believe that it's a time for you to take some quiet time to map out your day. I think it gives you time to think your goals through and exactly what you want your day to be like. And when you take the time to visualize what you want your day to be, feel, and look like, that you're more calmer and you're more efficient. And actually, research has shown that even two minutes of visualization and positive thinking in the morning can really improve your mood. Anybody need a mood change and clarity for the entire day ahead. So you, we already know that whatever picture you hold in your mind is what will manifest in your life and that you can intentionally create your day with your imagination. So a great example of that would be, uh, I think it was a couple of days this week. I, I, I was just booked solid with so many things to do. I was speaking, I was coaching, I was contacting some authors for the show. I had to take Angel to the groom. It was just so much that I had to do. And so one of the things that I did was I, I just practiced my normal ritual. And I said, that God, I believe that you've given me the grace for all of the, the all of the demands of this day. And so I wake up and I walk in that grace. And I visualize and saw myself doing, enjoying, and delighting in that day instead of dreading. And I saw myself smiling and laughing and talking to the vet and just really having a great time during the day. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. Why did that happen? Because I visualized my day. That's a powerful ritual. Number three, eat breakfast. All right, that may seem so common sense, but do you know that uh, many people don't eat breakfast? And I've heard a lot of experts say that eating breakfast, you're breaking the fast, is one of the most powerful things that you can do in the morning because you are fueling your body for the tasks that lay ahead of you. And so I believe that it will really help you to maintain a steady focus throughout the day. And for me personally, protein seems to help me in the morning to really just be more alert, more focused, more attentive. And my question to you is, what are you eating for breakfast? You know, studies have also shown if if you're eating a lot of, uh, let's just say, five pancakes and and three cups of coffee with lots of cream and sugar, that by 10 o'clock, you're going to really be sleepy. Okay, so we're talking about rituals because as you heard at the beginning of the show, it's the small rituals that create our lives. And I can tell where your life is going by your daily rituals. And we're starting off small, but we are going to be consistent uh, so that we can sustain uh, these rituals. Okay, number four. Say bye-bye to that one big test. You know that big test that you've been putting off. So we are going to reprioritize your to-do list and we're going to place that most dreaded task at the top of your list. It might be, I don't know, cleaning out your garage or filing your taxes or 
or, or making a phone call. I don't know what it is. So instead of letting that one big task loom over your day, because subconsciously and subliminally, we know that, that it is lurking <laughs> in the background of your thinking. So we're not going to let it really loom over all of our day. We're going to save ourselves from the agony and the stress of it because what we're going to do it first. And you know, when you do, you will feel a sense of relief and you'll be more ready and willing to tackle all of those maybe seemingly trivial tasks that follow. Uh, besides that, I, I recently read that the morning is the best time when you typically have more energy and you feel most rested. So that sounds like a win-win to me. And so I think one way that we can reprioritize and really deal with that one task that we've been putting off is to break it down in small, manageable, measurable steps. And that may mean we may begin with 30 minutes in the morning and then 30 minutes in the evening uh, tackling that particular task. Okay, next, number five, um, motivational affirmations that work for you. I think this is a powerful one because you do know that you create your world with your words. We're talking about rituals that you can begin to utilize in your daily life so that you can create an extraordinary life, so that you can create a life beyond your wildest dreams. This is what I believe. I believe that discipline comes first and then once you repeat the habit over and over and over and over and over again it becomes second nature to you or like autopilot so affirmations that work for you and the operative word is that work for you i just believe that you need to that every affirmation just doesn't resonate with you so you already know that you create your world what with your words. Your life follows your words. So in my opinion, this would be like one of the main rituals that I would incorporate into my life. And there are many ways that you can do that. You can find affirmations or declarations um, on YouTube, you know, on, on the web. You can Google it. So this might be an example of what it might look like for you. Uh, I am willing, ready, and able to receive money. And when you, and you know, of course, you know, you're saying your affirmations out loud so that you can send out those powerful, faithful words to the universe. Okay, I see abundance everywhere. I am a rich child of a loving universe. Divine life flows through every cell in my body. Every action I take moves me toward improved health. Every morning I give thanks for continuing health. I deserve love and I get it in abundance. I have attracted the most loving person in my life and my life is now full of joy. I love myself and everybody else, and in return, everybody loves me. I'm going to let you think about that while I take a sip of water. How did that make you feel just hearing those affirmations? Well, I know the answer to that because words are creative, so... Uh, one ritual that you could incorporate in your life would be to begin to speak out every day affirmations. I have about 40 or 50 that I speak out all of the time. Okay, the next ritual that you might want to consider is get moving or what? Exercise. Uh, morning workouts not only give you a boost of energy, they pump you up, you know. Uh, somebody says, I'm pumped up. And it ensures your senses are up and running. And you just feel better. You're ready to take on any problem that comes your way. And studies have shown that people are less likely to come up with excuses about, you know, I don't have the time to exercise if they exercise early in the morning. You know, I know when I go to the gym early in the morning, I am shocked. I mean, some people there, my gym opens at 5 a.m. 
I mean, people are there at five, six, seven. One morning, I couldn't sleep, and I'm like, let let me just go to the gym, which is about maybe five minutes out of my subdivision. And I was stunned at how many people were in the gym that early. And remember that most of the people that I shared with you at the beginning of the show, they are early risers. So the Mayo Clinic found that exercise helps to control your weight, improve your mood. Have you been moody lately? It boosts your energy, creates an overall sense of well-being. And you know, we're created for well-being. And um, when I exercise, I I know that the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit is on the inside of me. So many times I see it as a form of worship where I'm exercise, exercising and really presenting my body to God. That's just what I do. And so get moving and start exercising. So are you beginning to see how, wow, if I just implemented three of these rituals, what would happen to my life by the end of 2016? So the next one is pack snacks or healthy food. And why is that important? Because I believe that you're planning for success when you do that, because we already know that eating healthy food fuels your brain. It it improves your focus, productivity, and your memory. And so when you plan your snacks ahead of time, you can like take some protein bars with you, some fruit, maybe some nuts, Uh, And really, it prevents your blood sugar from dropping. And I think it's just smart because little baby snacks, it keeps your metabolism going all day long. And it helps your brain to work at full capacity throughout your busy day. And, And so, you know, anything can happen. If you're in a large city like Atlanta, Los Angeles, New York, you know, you could get stuck in a traffic jam. Or a snow jam, (laughs) like what happened in Atlanta a couple of years ago. And so just always plan to be successful and just take those small protein bars or whatever works for you so that you can fuel your body. I believe that the more you love your body, the more you want to put in healthy, organic, live food into your body. Okay, Let's see, I'm moving as fast as I can. Number eight is toss it or let go of old stuff, old past hurts, old disappointment, old bitterness, you know, and it's just time to let go of all clutter in your life. And some of you guys have heard people talk about how when you unclutter your home, your car, how you're really making the way for the new to come into your life. I don't know, it might be some old boxes that you need to toss away. You need to get rid of some some old magazines. How many of y'all got old magazines back to 2013, 14, 15? You need to throw those things out. Junk mail, even apps on your phone, old receipts of paper, etc. You need to release and toss out old resentments, what people did or didn't do for you. You just need to unclutter your life physically, uh, toss it out, uh, forgive people, release people. I believe that people are really doing the best that they can. It's really a choice. Uh, I know um, just last week I had a situation with a friend and uh, even though I knew that I had not done anything she was acting kind of weird. So I called her and I said, you know, I don't know what's up with you. I know you have a lot going on, but if, but, but if I've done anything to offend you, I ask you to forgive me, etc. And she said, oh no, but I just wanted to what unclutter my thinking around it because I had been thinking about it. I knew someone who had old pictures of an old boyfriend. You need to get rid of all of that. How can God bring the new in your life when the old is still there? Okay, I'm talking fast. I'm moving fast. Okay, go to bed early. This is another ritual. Uh, Do you want to stay up another night 
really late and watch another episode on Netflix again, you know, you know, is that going to bring you more money? And there's nothing wrong with that. But getting the proper amount of sleep is really critical, you know, not only to your mental health, but to your creativity and weight control. You know, when you get proper sleep, uh, you lose weight quicker. When you don't, what happens? You, you overeat the next day. Uh, I think that getting proper sleep really sets you up for success for the next day. So when you're resting, you're really preparing for success. Uh, studies have shown that getting extra sleep improves your memory, helps you to think clearer, you're more creative, uh, you, you, you're you more uh, alert, you, you're more involved in problem solving, etc. So you notice that most of the people that I shared with you, a lot of them went to bed early and what they got up early, why? Because that was a ritual that was a part of their life. Okay, silence. You know, when you wake up early, I just feel like, like I said, the morning is so mysterious when it's quiet. It offers you an opportunity to really sit down, relax, think, look at the sunrise. You know, you hear the birds chirping. Have you ever been lying in bed and you the birds wake you up? It, it's so beautiful, but it's your chance to be silent and still. You've heard me say that there is profit in silence and stillness. Uh, you can sit still in the morning. I believe that's when you receive your downloads. That's when you receive thoughts. You can just breathe and just receive what God has for you for that day. You know, I just noticed that you know, I always have CDs going in my car and I just felt that, you know, that I was going to start having more silent times in my car just to be in tune with the spirit. You know, what is God trying to speak to me at that very moment? And so silence is very powerful. It's when you hear from the spirit. And once again, research has shown that silence boosts your immune system. It reduces pain. Isn't that amazing? And it makes you look younger and you feel better. You want to look younger? Become silent. And one way you can do that, my next ritual is unplug your devices. Oh my God, did I really say that? Yes, unplug your devices. You know, so many people sleep with their phone. I used to be guilty of that, their phone, their mobile phone next to their bed, uh, their iPad. And uh, even if they wake up during the night, they may look at their phone. They grab their phone and their iPad, checking their email and their Facebook and other social media apps. And we're just addicted to our de devices. And there was a study recently that says 67% of cell phone owners check their phones, even when it isn't buzzing are you guilty let me see your hands and uh it's so funny they said uh they do that because of the f-o-m-o -O. and i'm like what in the world is that fear of missing out there's a fear of missing out on something so they're always checking their phones and so unplugging your devices trusting that god or spirit you know whatever you need to hear uh, will be there for you when you wake up in the morning. You need to be quiet. You know, I turn off my iPads. I leave them downstairs. My iPhone is off. It's downstairs. And my thing is, God, if anything happens during the night, you're there to help people. Okay, next, uh, get your greens on. Uh, what, what am I talking about? Just every day we're talking about rituals that you can begin to implement in your life in order to create success. We know that green leafy vegetables are excellent for your health. And let's just say you don't like them that much. Then you can, you can really begin juicing green drinks because when you drink a green drink, I got that out, you're really giving your body pure nutrition. You're getting all the vitamins and the minerals and 
in the alkaline minerals and the antioxidants and the chlorophyll and everything else that you need. And you guys know all of the studies on drinking a green drink. So I probably drink a green drink about five times a week. And when I drink it, it's so interesting. I can just feel the life uh, going on the inside of me. So I use a Nutribullet. I know a lot of people say you don't get out the fiber when you do that, but that's cool. I have a juicer also that I sometimes use, but whatever works for you, just begin where you are. Begin where you are implementing these rituals. Okay, next ritual. I don't know if I want to get all 20 in. Keep some kind of personal notebook or journal. We know that Oprah journals every day and, and J.K. Uh, Rowling, she keeps her journal. And successful people, why is, why is keeping a journal important? Because successful people like to track their progress. They like to set goals and reflect and take a look at what's been going on in their lives and learn from their mistakes. And so when you have a notebook or a journal, you can write down, what did I do today? What happened today? What did I accomplish today? What mistakes did I make today? Uh, what do I want to change and so forth? I think it's a great way to reflect. I think it's a great place and way to capture your important thoughts. And, and it's a great place to really track where you've been and where you intend to go. And quite honestly, it's one of the most, I believe, uh, underused yet incredibly effective tools that is available to all of us. I know that uh, Peter Adams shared how he had... Um, he keeps a journal and he had gone back to just, you know, read it over a six month period. And he was in awe of all of the m miracles that had taken place in his life. I know that for years I kept a prayer journal where I was able to really take a look at what I prayed when that prayer was answered and manifested, and I would put the date on there. And just going back, looking at that would really, really help me. All right, uh, man, I'm not going to be able to comment on some of these. I'm just going to mention them. Taking action every day towards your dream. Uh, make that a ritual. Do something. Faith without works is dead. Remember, God blesses movement. Another one is commit your goals to paper. I say this almost every week. Write down your goals. Another ritual is surround yourself with positive and successful people. I'm not going to expound on that. Uh, another ritual is get a mentor or a coach. People who have mentors and coaches have increased productivity, increased self-confidence, better communication, a more, a more balanced life work uh, of life, uh, a, a more productive time management in their lives. And I guess the last thing that, that I'm going to say is that I have time to say, I didn't get out 20 in, but you get the message. Pr pray and connect with God or spirit. I mean, every day you need to have a ritual where you pray to connect to, with God. Ask for help. Ask for wisdom, insight, and favor. If you don't know how to pray, go online and find some prayers that you can read out loud. It's about recognizing that on this day, you're not alone, but you are connected with the spirit that organizes the universe and loves you and supports you. So these are some rituals. Can you see how if you would just begin to implement one, two, three, four of these rituals in your life on a consistent basis that they would really begin to create uh, a life beyond your wildest dreams? Well, I know I was talking fast, but I know I gave a lot of information and you need to listen to this again and again. Once again, happy Valentine's Day weekend. And this is a great time for me to say, you know, there's love all around us because what God loves you, I love you. And remember this, the best is yet to come. 
you better believe. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance Arnold will be back next week with another great show just for you. For more information, please visit fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Geico presents sharing versus oversharing. Today, Bridget Griffin shared a video of her daily yoga routine, two self-help articles, and her new blog called Build Your Inner Bridge with Bridge. Girl, your sharing has turned into oversharing. No worries, Bridge. Geico has some info worth sharing with your seven blog followers, like how you could save money on your car insurance, update your policy, and report a claim just by visiting geico.com. How's that for building your inner bridge? Bridge, Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Presenting The Grill. Oh, beautiful pork tenderloin for double saucy ribs with smoky bacon barbecue. You're gonna need a bib. America, America, pork will your taste buds thrill. And ground pork's good in the neighborhood from grill to shining grill. Let's grill for it. Get started at porkbeinspired.com. This message funded by America's pork producers in the pork checkoff.